The year is 32 BBY. Two Jedi land on the desert planet of Tatooine in search of parts to repair their ship. Before leaving, they discover strong force sensitive by the name of Anakin Skywalker. Let him go, the force calls to the sand. It is not your time yet. Qui-Gon stands in front of the council alongside his Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi and the young force sensitive Anakin Skywalker. Now that he is away from Tatooine, Qui-Gon has doubts whether Anakin really is the Chosen One. He had felt such a strong presence on the sandy planet, yet despite being surrounded by some of the most force-attuned Jedi in the history of the Order, he couldn't help but feel as if something was missing. Following the meeting, Qui-Gon went to the Jedi archives, looking for answers as to why Tatooine had been so strong in the Force, even without Anakin, when it was not known to be. Entering some of the lowest depths of the temple, only accessible to Jedi Masters, Qui-Gon managed to source several books on the planet, but had not yet found one pointing to the planet being particularly Force-sensitive. Qui-Gon meditates, and after a while, he finds an object calling to him. Using the Force, Qui-Gon summons the object. It is a Jedi holocron, with the prophecy of the Chosen One. Qui-Gon had seen this object several times before, but this time, It was different. It did not have text record to him, but rather an image. The image was of sand. Qui-Gon reports his findings to the council, who were confused at this change, and how sand could ever bring balance to the Force. Whilst Yoda scours other sandy planets in search of an answer, the events of the Phantom Menace proceed as in canon, with Palpatine becoming Supreme Chancellor, and Qui-Gon falling at the hands of Darth Maul. However, With Qui-Gon's last breath, not only does Obi-Wan promise to train Anakin, but he also promises to go to Tatooine. Yoda returns, bringing back samples of sand to be tested. The tests reveal an off-the-scale degree of force sensitivity. It was not something or part of someone that could be trained, but rather a disciple of the force itself. The Council realised that if the Sith got their hands on the sand, it could lead to the destruction of the Jedi. Over a period of several years, the Jedi sent knights to the sandy planets as they attempted to protect the sand. But there was a problem. The sand was moving onto the ships at their own accord. The Jedi knights had no defence, as they were either engulfed by sandstorms or blinded. Meanwhile, on Geonosis, Count Dooku was walking in the Petronarchy Arena alongside Darth Sidious, discussing the properties of sand and how it could be manipulated for their cause. Sidious was thinking about using sand to create life forms, which could be turned into a legion of Sith assassins with a complex cloning process, something his master Darth Plagueis had been working on up until his demise. Count Dooku agreed that this was a good idea, and together they left to go to their ship. Suddenly, the sand beneath them rose, attempting to form a tornado around the duo. Sidious is able to fend off the sand, but Dooku is carried away by the sheer ferocity of the sand. A warning to the Sith, thought the sand, as it chuckled to itself, knowing its time would be soon. Obi-Wan and Anakin at this time have landed on Tatooine to discover why the sand had been causing so much trouble. Anakin goes to visit his mother, who at this time is still under the control of Watto. Anakin, upon finding out this, goes to Watto to ask for her freedom. Of course Watto refuses, and Anakin has to force choke him. Sand is amused and slightly impressed at this display of the Force, and decides to humour itself by sinking Watto into quicksand. Obi-Wan cannot find any answers, but what he does find is more sand coming aboard his ship. He tries to shift it using the Force, but it doesn't budge. When Anakin gets back, he is annoyed at the sight of sand, who he thinks is his enemy, and attempts to kick it off the ship. The sand internally sighs, knowing that he needs to be patient and maintain its balance in the Force. Arriving back on Coruscant, Obi-Wan and Anakin force push the sand down the ramp, with the sand complying this time. The sand is then placed in a tub and taken to the Jedi Temple. After being left alone for several days, the sand overhears a conversation between Master Yoda and Master Windu about the sand, saying they should take the sand to the Chancellor and see what he knows about it. The sand laughs at the Jedi being so blind to the enemy. Later, Yoda scoops up some of the sand and places it in a smaller container. 
Upon entering the Chancellor's office, the Sand senses there are Sith artifacts on display. How could the Jedi have been so blind to this? The Sand knew that this was its time to strike. As Yoda opened the container, the Sand levitated the dwarf he statues, and out dropped Palpatine's gold-hilted lightsaber, clanging to the floor. Yoda was in shock, and before Palpatine could react, the Sand wrapped itself around Palpatine, choking the life out of him and leaving the Sith Lord's lifeless body on the floor of the office. Back in the archives, Qui-Gon looks at the holocron again, and it has changed into words again. There is balance, it says. That is it for what if Sand was the chosen one. Pretty absurd, I know. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment below to suggest what what-ifs you want me to make. Other than that, hope you enjoyed this video, and see you next time.